Welcome to The Point of View. I'm your host, DDE80, a.k.a. Mike D, a.k.a. 13th Wonder of the World, a.k.a. Mike DZ. So, so nice to hear from you guys on a Wednesday. In about a few minutes, we're going to have AEW Dynamite the Wrestling on T TBS TNT come on tonight as well as the start. Of Continuing on with the start of the NBA season. Again, tonight with a slew of games, as well as the beginning of the World Series between the Dodgers and the Yankees. This has been like 43 years in the making since the last time those two teams played for the World Series. My bet is going on the Yankees. I think that Aaron Judge finally solidifies himself as a great Yankee. He's already a historical Yankee, but if he wins this World Series... That puts him up there with Babe Ruth, along with A-Rod, along with Derek Jeter, along with all the other greats that's been in New York, including, you know, C.C. Sebastian, the greatest, one of the greatest pitchers that the Yankees had, puts him in that, in that, that statue and big status of the New York Yankees. Now, let's not forget about the Dodgers because they're going up against guys that are trying to win their second Super Bowl. I mean, World Series, excuse me. We're looking at, of course, Atani, Mookie Betts looking for his second, Freddie Freeman, Will Smith, Monksy, all those guys there trying to get to, get their World Series, trying to get another World Series. Atani, this will be his first one. This could also solidify him as one of the greatest players to ever play the game of baseball, which he is. So that starts tonight as well. It's so many sports going on tonight on television. Let's recap. But before I recap, I want to give a shout out to the Point Place family. Shout out to Bobby Reezy and all of my partners that's with the Point Place family. That means everybody. That's shout out to Bolsky, shout out to that dude, Wendy Sky, and everybody else that's on the Point Place family. That's with the Point Place family. I thank all y'all for listening. Shout out to my little homie and Breezy. Shout out to my little baby niece, Naya Naya. Shout out to my sister. I love all y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to The Point of View. The Point of View is now back on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. God done blessed me to where I, I'm getting better with what I had with the surgery. God's getting me better. And now I'm able to try to come on here most of the days, every almost every day again, to try to give you guys some daily ups, some daily sports, some daily talks about What's going on in the world of sports? I will talk about AEW tomorrow. I'm not going to talk about wrestling tonight, but I will talk about right now what's hot, and that's the NBA and Major League Baseball. I've already talked about it a little bit. I'll get another. I'll put a little bit more into it in a minute. But let's talk about last night, the two games that came on last night. And I know that a lot of people lost money last night because the Boston Celtics, this is the first game we're going to talk about. The Boston Celtics got their rings. Usually on ring night, the team that gets the rings usually don't play as hard because they're happy that they got their goal, which is a championship ring. The Boston Celtics said, F that. And excuse my friends for saying that, but it's just what it was. Forget that. They went out there and they played like they had just won the NBA championship. The New York Knicks, who is a new squad, has new players according to with Cat, you know, Carl Anthony Towns, Mikael Bridges, who's played, who I don't know what's going on with his shot, but he needs to go back in the lab and try to fix that. Maybe if he gets a little more practice in on his shot, maybe it'll get better. Terrible shooting last night. The Knicks were playing great at first. No, they weren't. Somebody said that. No, they wasn't. The Boston Celtics came out like gangbusters. Jason Tatum had like seven three-pointers in, in the first half. And I'm talking about raining threes came down Boston. Who's going to stop that? New York is the closest thing that could possibly beat the Boston Celtics. And guess what happened, folks? They got toe out the frame in the first game of the season. Man, that's tough. That is tough. 
because of the fact of the matter was because they were showcasing the Knicks on national TV. These guys should have followed up what the girls just did with Stewie and with Junquel Jones and with Sabrina, even though she didn't play, she didn't play well in that last in that last game. But those girls put New York on their map on the map by winning their first WNBA title. And you guys go out there and you go up against the defending champions and you lay an egg like that? It's going to be hard to beat the Celtics, man. You're going to have to catch them when Jalen Brown, who has, who's making a statement, who's making a statement, and Jason Tatum, who's playing with a chip on his shoulder. I keep telling people this. If you think for one second that Jason Tatum is not egged, about what happened to him into the in the Olympics, then you got another thing coming. And I can't wait until he plays against the Golden State Warriors because he's going to take that game personal when they play Golden State both times. And I'm going to tell you why. Because Steve Kerr did not play him in the Olympics like he was supposed to. I'll tell you somebody else that, that should have a chip on their shoulder when they play Golden State, and that's Tyrese Halliburton. He didn't play at all. In the Olympics, my theory was, according to somebody, was not the right theory of what I said about this. You're trying to win a gold medal, and you know, you should. And, and, and I agree with what they said. But I also disagree because the simple fact of the matter is, Jason Tatum has a chip on his shoulder. That man did not play in the Olympics. And he's proven why, because he came out there and lit New York up. Bronson. Bridges, Josh Hart, Cat, those boys got to go back in the lab, man. Anobi, who, who they got last year, he didn't do squat last night. He didn't even have eight points. I think he had like six. And for them to shoot 29 three-pointers, they were one three-pointer away from breaking the record with 33s in a game. If they would have did that, because, see, people that like the Lakers don't like the Celtics. The Celtics don't like the Lakers. The Lakers don't like the Celtics. You think for one second that the Lakers were happy with what they saw last night from Boston? No. As a Laker guy, no. I ain't like that. And, I liked, I, and I'm going to tell you why I liked it, Boston. Because I respected KG, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen, and Rondo, and, and, and Perk. And all those boys that won that championship back in 2008, I, oh, I respect them. I respect Larry Bird. One of the coldest white boys they'll play the game of basketball, him and Dirk Nowitzki. But man, I'm here to tell you guys, this is what I am talking about right here with why I said what I said about the whole nine yards of the NBA. I said this, I said this a while back when I was watching the Olympics and I saw that neither Tyrese Halliburton or Jason Tatum got any burn. I say Jason Tatum is going to take this serious when the season starts. And that's exactly what he's done in game one of the NBA season against a New York team that was supposed to have the game closer. But I'm talking about everybody was shooting threes out there. Pritchard, Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown, Harford. Man, how you gonna stop that when you got a five set, a five set team, which I mean a five man team, the starting five, all of them can shoot threes. How you gonna stop that? You can't. You just gotta hope that they have a bad shooting night in order to beat the Celtics. They learned from when they played Golden State a couple of years ago and Jason Tatum didn't step up to the plate. And I'll tell you this right now, he played better in last year's finals did he did in the finals two years ago when Steph, Clay, and Draymond went over on them to win the title. Boston had that in the back of their minds. They weren't going to let nobody beat them, but we'll see. Because I'm telling you right now, that Eastern Conference is going to be filthy with contenders for the NBA championship to come out the East. As well as the West, let's get started on the West. Let's talk about game two last night which I watched from the beginning to the end. Great moment, LeBron James, 22 years in the league, 39 years old, the all-time leading scorer, 
He comes out there. He takes it easy. Bronny comes in. Father son, father son moment on the court. Bronny missed his shot. They put him in for three minutes. Sat him down. He's got to develop. Now, I'll tell you like this here. The pressure's on that young man. Because they're going to keep rubbing him and keep staying on him until he do what he needs to do. I think him sitting on the end of the bench all season, it could help him. But I think he needs to go to the G League. Why I say that? Put him in the G League for a couple of weeks. Let him, let him elevate a little more. If you do that, he'll come back out crisp. LeBron James Jr. can play. Bronny can play. It's just, you know... God saw things different with him when he had a heart issue. And then, you know, he was able to recover from that. Now he's able to play again. Thank God for that, you know, that he's able to shake back from that situation. And he's able to come out there and play. So that's a good thing for him. That's a good thing for the business. And that's exactly what is going on with the Lakers. Actually, the Lakers played absolutely phenomenal last night. Man, AD's out there playing like the New Orleans old AD. If you can get that, if you can get that potential and get that progress out of AD for the season, the Lakers may have a chance to be in the playoffs and have a deep run. We know that Minnesota's gonna be there. Ant Man, them Ant Man's still gonna be Ant Man. They're trying to get Randall and DiFacenzo adjusted to playing with them and all that. We get that. But that was a great win for the Lakers last night. Rui is being more aggressive. AR-15 is going to be AR-15. D'Lo needs to tighten this game up. You asked for the state. You signed back with the Lakers because of what you wanted to win. Well, have that mindset, man. Stop playing, man, Goldilocks. Get out there and do what you need to do, man. Bust you a couple of threes, man. Because when D'Angelo is scoring, the Lakers win. They won last night, but it was because of AD's playing on both sides of the ball. When AD's playing like that, man, you ain't going to be able to do nothing with him. Rudy Gobert is one of the greatest defenders in the game, but he couldn't do too much with AD last night. Julius Randle is a fix in the business. Julius Randle played with AD in New Orleans. Man, what? Man, you can't you can tell me that this is the potential that Anthony Davis was not given. He stayed hurt a lot. The potential's always been there. He just stayed hurt a lot. And you guys gotta remember, they tried to compare him with Giannis. And you can believe this here. They're on, they still have that competition between AD and Giannis. That's just that's just the ball game, how it goes. Now, tonight, on to the night. Good win for the Lakers. We hope that the Lakers can, can do better, can keep going, and keep winning, man. Everybody talking about they're going to be five or six. I don't know about that, man. They could be one of the top four teams in the, in the, in the West if they keep playing like this. If AD keep playing like this, if they keep playing the way that they're playing, I'm not going to say they're going to shoot well all every night, but there's going to be losses. And there's going to be losses that hurts. But I want to see how they're going to bounce back from this. I'm tired of them being a play-in team. It's like them and the Pelicans, that's all they know is to play in. I'm sick of seeing that from New Orleans, and I'm sick of seeing that from the Lakers. I'm tired of you being 7, 8, 9, and 10. I want you to be 6, 6, 5, 4. Get out of that play-in, man. Play to get out of that play-in. As far as this NBA Cup stuff, I wouldn't care if the Lakers won that again, but I want them to win the real thing. That's the NBA title. Not this Cup stuff again, man, even though I think they, they can embrace it and win again. But no. Let's do something else, guys. Before I go back to basketball, let me, let me switch up and talk about something that really irked my nerves, guys. So I get up this morning doing my daily walk and preparing to go to the doctor. And I read across my phone from Yahoo Sports that DeAndre Hopkins has been traded to the Kansas City Chiefs. What in the hell is going on with the NFL? And forgive me for cussing, 
Forgive me for the, for the words, but I'm going to say this because this is, this is where I'm getting frustrated at. The Chiefs are 6-0. What do you need to give an undefeated team another weapon for? Somebody explain that to me. Explain that to me, guys. 6-0. They are ready. They are the best team in the NFL like everybody thought they were going to be. And you go out there and get another threat in DeAndre Hopkins? When you could have traded him to the Saints? When you could have traded him to, and I hate to say this, to the Cowboys? Or you could have gave him, or you could have put him on a Baltimore Ravens team? Or a team that needs a contention that needs some somebody that can upbuild their team. Man, him going to Kansas City, that ain't gonna happen. He can sit out there and get 10 passes and probably catch five of them, 50 yards, and, and the Chiefs will win. Look at who they got on their team. Pachero. They got Travis Kelsey, who's Taylor Swift boo. You've got Rice, who's injured, but he'll be back. You got um, Hollywood Brown, who is injured, and I don't think he's coming back this year. That's a weapon that they have. You've got Scatlin. Scatlin, he's playing for you guys. Man, are you kidding me, man? Juju Schuster, he's back with Kansas City. Man, what? and you mean to tell me now you got DeAndre Hopkins that's going to be on the other end while Juju's catching the ball as well, I think, Ju I think Juju is in Kansas City, if I'm not mistaken. Because he was with us uh, last year, and, and it didn't. Well, I'm not going to even get into the New England Patriots. Because if we were to get somebody like that, they wouldn't even stay there. But I'm saying, getting him when you already loaded, when you're already winning, Man, that's a bad, I don't know. The NFL, and, and, and I don't want to be one of those that talk about conspiracy theories and all that crap there, but let me tell you what I see. And I know a lot of people are not going to like what I'm about to say, but oh well, forget it. Because I'm going to say it. this is the point of view, and my boys got my back on what I'm saying with this here. Let me say this. The NFL is trying to make Patrick Mahomes the second coming of Tom Brady. The only difference is Patrick Mahomes is light-skinned and Patrick Mahomes is mobile where he can run out the pocket. Tom Brady didn't do that when he was, when he was playing. He was able to just get the ball off and, and just make plays. Patrick Mahomes, and, and let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me clear this up, he's one of the greatest black quarterbacks of all time. Because there's only been two other quarterbacks that, that has played this game. One happens to be Doug Williams that played for, that's, in, that's from Grambling, but played for the Washington, at the time, Redskins, but now they're the Commanders. He was the first black quarterback to win a, a Super Bowl in the NFL. And number two is the Pittsburgh Steelers' Russell Wilson, who won a championship with the Seattle Seahawks. And by the way, the way he played the other night against Aaron Rodgers and the Jets, that's the way Russell Wilson has been known to play. Very great game by him. Very good win by the Pittsburgh Steelers. I hate that, you know, that Fields, that, 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 that Fields didn't get his shot, that Justin Fields didn't get his shot again. But, you know, it is what it is. I think it's going to come down to, if Russell can get these boys to the playoffs, if Russell Wilson can get these guys to the playoffs, then Russell Wilson will possibly be their starting quarterback if they re-sign him next year. But here's what I here's where I figured this out, at, and this is the this is the con of the situation with Russell Wilson. If he makes too many more mistakes, he is one, two plays away. And I I I, I tell people this on the daily when I talk to him about him. He is two are three plays away from becoming a, a, a bench backup quarterback. I'm telling you. He has to stay on his toes, man. He has to stay on his toes. He's, he's going to go in the Hall of Fame one of the greatest quarterbacks that ever played a game of basketball. Not basketball, but football, excuse me. So he has it. He has it. He still has it. I didn't like him when they, when they played against us in the Super Bowl, but we were able to beat him. You know what I'm saying? 
But I think that Russell Wilson could possibly bring get Pittsburgh into the playoffs, at least a wild card. If he gets them to the wild card and they lose off the strength of the team better than them, then that's what it is. Let me get back to Kansas City. I don't see but four teams in all of football that could possibly beat them. And I'm talking about the teams that are in the AFC as well as the NFC. Let me say first, in the NFC, the Detroit Lions have a possibility, have a great chance. If the Lions were to go to the Super Bowl, I think the Lions, Jared Goff, could beat Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm going to tell you why I say that, because the way that Campbell coaches, it is hard to stop what they're doing. Sam Laporta, you know, Montgomery, and all those boys that catches the ball, Gibbs, all those boys that catch the ball and run the ball for the Lions, they are playing, and they're, they're full of trick games. They're full of tricks. If they wouldn't, if they, and I'll say this, they possibly could have won the Super Bowl last year. I said that they lost at the wrong time they did. Because in the game against San Francisco, they went for it twice on fourth down instead of kicking field goals. And they gambled and they lost. I don't see too much of that gambling happening this year with them. I think that they're ready to play, and I think they're ready to do what they need to do to get the job done. So when I say that there, I'm just saying what it is and how it is and what's going to happen with that team. I think Detroit is one of the teams that could beat Kansas City if they meet up in the Super Bowl. The second team in the NFC could possibly be a matchup, a rematch between the Eagles and the Chiefs. It was only one mistake that Jalen Hurts made in that Super Bowl that cost him when he fumbled that ball, like I think like a minute left in the game or something like that. If he wouldn't have fumbled the ball or they lost the ball, they would have beaten Kansas City. I think Kansas City, they lucked up and won that Super Bowl just like they lucked up and won last year against the 49ers. Um, those are the two teams I think that can beat them on the NFC. The AFC, it comes down to two teams. How well Buffalo's going to play with Josh Allen. Now he's got another, uh, another deep threat in Cooper to go along with those other boys that they got out there, Kincaid and all those cats. I think for one second, and I'll say this with one thing, I think that if Buffalo plays Kansas City, I think this will be the year that they get Patrick Mahomes out of there. Because the fact of the matter is, is that Buffalo is reaching and reaching and reaching, and they feel like they almost got it. You know how it is when you're about to get a blessing, and it feels like your blessing is right there on the tip of your fingers, and you know it's coming, but it just, your fingers just can't get to it yet. That's the way that they are right now, the Buffalo Bills. And same with the Baltimore Ravens, because they're another team that can't beat Patrick Mahomes in the, in the playoffs. My thing is this. I think this year, how the way that Derrick Henry's playing, if him and Lamar can stay healthy and the wide receivers out there with Flowers and all those boys, if they can play the game the right way, then guess what? I think they will win this year. I think that, that Baltimore can come out, and I think that Lamar Jackson can finally get a Super Bowl ring. But he's going to have to – it's going to be a tough task for him and Josh Allen – because of the simple fact of the matter is Patrick Mahomes ain't going nowhere. And a lot of people say this, but I'm going to say this because this is true. I think that the referees are backing up the Kansas City Chiefs, man. It's just that simple, man. I watched that Saints game. When the Chiefs played the Saints, there was a lot of calls that were very, very questionable in that game against the Saints. And speaking of the Saints, I hope that Derek Carr comes back and I hope that Derek Carr can be a game buster and go back and get the Saints back into the playoffs. Because as of right now, the Falcons look like they are the best team in that division. Tampa just got molly whopped by the Baltimore Ravens. But I'm here to tell you guys, I still hope that the Saints can do it, man. I am not worrying about the Patriots because the Patriots are flunks. The, the, the Patriots are stuck in, 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 in rebuilding. Gerard Mayo is on, a, he's not on the He's not on the hot seat yet. But I tell you this, we've got to get some more players in that thing, man. 
We need to, to, to get to the formula of how Belichick plays. We need to get the Belichick. We don't need Belichick back, but we need to get Belichick as a consultant or something. Because, man. man, this is terrible, man. Man, I've been in, uh, do you know how long I've been in pain watching the Patriots play like this? For the last three years, man. The last three years when we had Mac Jones out there as our quarterback. Then, man, the year that we had Cam, Cam got us to a, a, a winning season, but Cam didn't get us to the playoffs. Do you know how long I've been dealing with this for the last, well, actually, for the last Three years because Tom Brady won a championship in the year of the pandemic with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let me just say that. The Patriots have been not doing nothing within the last five years. But Tom Brady's been my boy. He's my quarterback. He's the greatest quarterback to ever play the game of football. Patrick Mahomes is trying to get to, Pat to Tom Brady. Patrick Mahomes needs to talk to me when he gets eight Super Bowls. Not four, not three. When he gets four, he come and holler at me. Tell me something then. Talk to me then. Until then, no. You are not better than Tom Brady. No. You good. I respect you as a brother, but no. Not until you win what you need to win. You got to win. You got to win five championships to, to break Brady's record. And that's just that simple. And I'm going to tell you something. The, the Kansas City Chiefs are not going to win the Super Bowl every year. It's not going to happen. This is not the years of the Lakers and the Celtics when the Celtics were winning 13 championships in a row, 11 straight championships. That ain't happening. You want to know why? The system ain't going to let them win every year. That's just all to it. It, it just ain't going to happen. I, I think this year Baltimore has a big chance to win the Super Bowl. I think the Detroit Lions have a chance to win the Super Bowl. I just don't think Kansas City can three-peat. If they do, oh, well, good for them but they will not win the following year. Everybody used to say that about the war. Oh man, the Warriors gonna win every year. No, the Warriors didn't. And I went through some painful times with LeBron losing to the Warriors. When he lost, I lost. I ain't switch it up. When he lost, I lost. I lost right, right along with him. When they lost, I lost. When the Cavaliers lost, when LeBron was there the second go around, I was right there with him, cheering him on, and we were losing together. Same way with the Lakers. When we won that title during the pandemic, I was happy. I was happy. I was rejoicing that LeBron had finally got him a, a championship. Four years after he won one in 2016, but couldn't stop the Warriors. What's happening now with the Warriors? They're in a rebuild mode. Draymond Green talking about we gonna run it back. How you gonna run it back and you guys are, are, are on the on the decline? And that's what's gonna happen to Kansas City. The decline is gonna come. Right now they're on top of the mountain. The machine with them is getting them in. But when that dog on monkey wrench hit them, oh my God, it is over. Chiefs ain't gonna win every year, guys. The Chiefs are not going to win every year. I tell you this, they're good enough. They're good enough to win every year, but teams start getting better. If you think for one second in the NBA that teams did not get better because Boston won the championship, that's a lie. The Knicks got better. Even though they played like crap yesterday, they got better because Carl Anthony Towns can get them to the Eastern Conference Finals. And they have a chance to go to the NBA Finals. But this is my theory on this. And I'm going to say this. I think the Boston Celtics are going to be back in the NBA Finals this year. Barring injuries, barring Tatum and Brown being out, they're going to win the championship this year. Let me talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. This, it, this is tough because Paul George went there because the Clippers wasn't, you know, according to him, he said the Clippers were not treating him fair. And he goes there and he gets, he hyperstends his leg in a preseason game. So he's out. Then Joel and B said he's not playing back to backs. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen with this situation, man. If the Sixers are in contention for a playoff push, if they don't want to be in a play in, let me tell you what's going to happen. I think they were in a play in last year, if I'm not mistaken. I don't. I think they were like six or something. I can't remember the seeding, but I'll tell you this. 
if the Sixers be in a playing situation or close to a playing or out of playoff contention, if they feel like they're going, Paul George and and Joel and Beak are going to be playing every night because they're going to want to get higher in the playoffs. Watch what I tell you. It's not going to bother them now because the season just started. Well, wait till we get to April and March, April, February, March, April. You know, May starts out with the with the play-in tournament, then the playoffs. They have, of course, the championships is in June. But watch. Watch what I tell you. Watch what happens, guys, when this happens. You're going to see in beating them ramping up the play. That's if they that's if they're not steady enough in the Eastern Conference. If they're up and down, they're going to start playing. Back to baseball for a second. Like I said, I'm going for the Yankees. I hope the Yankees win tonight against the Dodgers. I like both teams. I got both hats. I like Mookie Betts. He's one of my favorite baseball players along with Aaron Judge. This is going to be an interesting matchup. You've got Judd versus Betts. You've got Soto versus Otani. You know, you got Freddie Freeman against Don DiCarlo. You know, you got Stanton. You know, Stanton against Muncy. You got all the guys and all the players ready for this situation. LA versus New York. Like I said yesterday, this is like the Lakers versus the Knicks back in the 70s. Uh, two, two big shows, two big cities, two big stadiums that could get it on. Aaron Judge is from California. So tonight, the first game is in California where the Dodgers play. It'll be interesting to see. Tomorrow is Thursday. I have another doctor visit tomorrow. But besides that, I will be back on. I will be giving you the recap on tonight's NBA games as well as AEW Dynamite, which they're crazy on there, man, because I don't know what's going on with them. They look like they're picking up all of WWE guys that are not, that don't want to be there anymore. AEW is grabbing them just like WCW's grab WWF wrestlers, just like WCW would grab WWF, but WWF would grab WCW wrestlers. So we're seeing what happens with this as well. Also, college football, and a lot of people are not talking about this, but let me say this for a minute before I get off the air and uh, you guys enjoy your show and enjoy your sports. Man, look at this for one second, and I want people to understand what I'm about to say. There was a time that college football would only come on on Saturdays. You have unranked teams playing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You have games come on now on Tuesday nights, college football. It's a money ploy. That's why they're doing it. Like tonight, they got games come on tonight. On, on Fridays, you see ranked teams that are in the top 25, they'll play against an unranked team. That's a money thing, guys. What it's doing is making people invest in college football during the week. Could you imagine if NFL would come on on a Tuesday? Nobody would watch that. They're barely watching it on Thursdays because some of the Thursday night games are boring. But because of what you see, it's interesting. Keep that in mind, folks. It's always money. It's always a money ploy when you see things happen. But other than that, you guys enjoy the NBA, the World Series, wrestling, all sports. This has been Mike D, a.k.a. DDE8013, one of the world. I got all kind of aliases. But you guys enjoy the point of view. You guys look for it on YouTube. You guys also enjoy United Sports. God bless you. God keep you. Pray for me, I'll pray for you. Let us all continue in strength. Let us all be happy. Even when sometimes we feel down and out, still hold your head up high. Keep the strength that is God in you. Good night.